Hi kids, it's Mrs. Ravel. How are you? Uh, welcome to the second week of mammals, um, our, our last group of animals that we're talking about. Um, just really quickly, I just want to run through um, the, the next big group of mammals. Uh, we talked about monotremes and marsupials last week and you guys did a really great job um, looking at those two groups of weird mammals. So now this week we're going to talk about all the other mammals. There are 17 other orders of mammals. Um, I had you guys do a little survey about the assignment this week and I will talk about that at the end of this quick little presentation. I'm just going to talk about um, the physiology of placental mammals, how it's a uh, a little different from the other animals that we've talked about all year long. And uh, then we'll get on with your assignment, okay? So what are we talking about? So within the class mammalia, uh, there is an infra class. I don't know if you remember Miss Drehas talking about all kinds of other taxonomic groups. Um, the taxonomy that we've covered all year has been pretty basic. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Inside all of those are all these other divisions. So uh, when we talk about class mammalia, we have the monotremes and the marsupials. Those are prototherians and, boy, I can't remember the marsupial one, uh, infraclass prototheria. So now we're going to talk about infraclass U. Area. These are the placental mammals. These are the mammals that you think about when you think about a big furry beast. If you look around, you probably have a eutherian in your home with you. Even if you don't have any pets, you, my dear, are a eutherian placental mammal. So what makes them different and so awesome? Here we go. Placental mammals, first of all, what does it mean to be placental? Placental mammals are viviparous. They are, we are, the only group of animals that consistently has viviparity, where uh, the embryos are incubated inside of the mother and receive all of their nutrition from her via an organ called the placenta. The placenta is a very special organ. When we talked about eggs, we talked about the yolk sac and how um, the embryos developing inside of an egg get their nutrition from that and then they hatch from their egg. Placenta is kind of like a yolk sac, only it is um, infused with blood vessels from the mother. And in placental mammals, the embryo is attached to the mo mother via, a placent via the placenta and this little attachment called the umbilical cord, which you, if you have a belly button, and you should, yeah, that's where you are attached to your mother when you are an embryo being fed and nourished by her body. The waste from the embryo also goes the other way, across the um, umbilical cord into the placenta to then be carried away to the mother's uh, excretory system, kidneys, whatnot. Okay. It's temporary. This placenta is a temporary organ. It grows when a zygote is fertilized and attaches to the mother's uterus. Once the um, baby is born, that placenta detaches from the uterus and is expelled uh, with the baby. That's what's called afterbirth in polite society. Mm. Um, that's all done, gone, once the baby is born, okay? This group of mammals has, with this little trickery of physiology, become the greatest diversity of any group of mammals. It is a highly successful way to reproduce. Um, and go look at the poster by the door when you get a chance. If we were in the classroom. I should have put my poster in here. Oh well. All right, so other things that make mammals, placental mammals special, uh, we have higher order behaviors. A lot of mammals, more mammals than we previously thought, are exhibiting a lot of high order behaviors. And what does that mean? Higher order behaviors are things like problem solving, predicting what will happen next, using tools, and using language. Mammalian researchers and behaviorists, which are called ethologists, which Freyla was at one time, they have looked at how mammals behave. And even some birds, but especially in mammals, a lot of mammals do these things. Humans as a mammal do these things 
on the highest order, but it doesn't mean that we're the only ones with any sort of intelligence. Our intelligence is just different, right? Um, we also, as a group, in for class youth area, uh, has a little bit of different social interactions. Not all mammals are social mammals, but uh, they do interact with each other a little differently than some other lower animals. Uh, mammals have very complex brains, very complex brains. And uh, another hallmark for this group is the care for their young. And of course, we saw that in monotremes and marsupials as well, um, but with eutherian placental mammals, the young generally take longer to develop and mature than other animals. That there's exceptions, like with some um, insectivores and rodents, babies are up and out of there in like two weeks. Rabbits, three weeks. But um, for most mammals, it's years, months. How long have you lived at home? Okay. Mammals take care of their babies, and that increases the probability of survival for them. Okay. Um, that takes a lot of resource. Uh, offspring are a huge investment for mammals, and not all and mammals don't have a lot of babies relative to other animals. Generally, if even if you have a litter of babies, a mammal is going to have a litter that tops out at eight babies, ten babies. Humans, of course, we normally do one at a time. Most mammals do two at a time, three at a time. And here's some of the animals we're talking about, you guys. I, just seriously, I could, I could go on forever about this group. I could show you so many pictures and videos, and I don't know if you saw the memes on the homepage, but I found a few. Uh, this is such an amazingly diverse group of animals. Look at this. Elephants, these huge, massive land animals. They're the heaviest land animal. Um, and then, of course, we've domesticated these critters. We've got cats and puppies at home, bunnies, all kinds of things. Uh, and then we have ungulates, which are hoofed mammals. They run on one toe two toes. They just run. And then of course we have a group of mammals that have um, completely evolved to go back to the water. Uh, that, that's the um, cetaceans. And that's, and there are a couple of others. But this huge diversity, this, this, this group of animals is just able to take the physical attributes and physiology that is, that are the basis of this group and transform it to take over any ecosystem and fit in every niche. It's they're amazing. Mammals are amazing. All right, um, and there's some more. This is uh, order Primata, the primates, and of course there's bats, you guys. Order Coroptera. I know a lot of people are afraid of bats. If we were in class, I would be working my tail off to convince you to love bats because. You guys look at that face. They're sky puppies. They're adorable and they're very necessary in the ecosystem, right? And then of course, we are also mammals. We are placental eutherian mammals. And we have managed to take all of those mammalian attributes and take them to the extreme and take over the world, okay? All right, Whew, there's so many. Okay, um, so the eutherian mammal orders include arteriodactylins, which are even-toed hoofed mammals. So these are these are the hoofed mammals like goats that run around with two toes, cloven hoofed animals. We have the carnivores. That's a big group. Meat eaters. That includes bears, felines, and um, dogs, canines, um, among many other things. Uh, the cetaceans, those are whales and porpoises. Chiropterans, which are the bats. Dermopterans, which are a very small group of flying lemurs. Oh my god, they're adorable though. Edentates, toothless mammals. They're cute. Weird, cute, weird. Um, Heracidae, Heracidae, Heracidae can never say that. But hyraxes and dassies, hyraxes are very cute. And these guys, when you look at them, you will be surprised to learn their closest relatives are elephants. Oops, sorry. Uh, what else do we have? We have insectivora. Those are insect eaters. Again, big group. Big. Uh, lagomorphs. Oh, super cute. Pikas, hares, and rabbits. And seriously, if you don't do pikas on your assignment, I'm going to be sad because pikas are awesome. And we have them here in Utah. Everybody knows what hares and rabbits are. Look up pika. Uh, Perisodactyla. Those are the odd tooth. 
odd toed hoofed mammals like horses. Uh, the pangolins are full of data and phew, man, they're important right now. Pinnipedia, these are the seals and walruses, another group that has gone back to living in the water. Prim primates, primata, that's monkeys and apes and hominids. And hominid is the fancy word for humans. Hopefully next week I'll get some time to have you guys look into your own uh, your own physiology and history. Uh, Proboscidea, those are the elephants. Rodentia, gnawing mammals, those are everywhere. Serenia, another group that's gone back to the ocean. Dugongs and manatees, floaty potatoes. Oh heck, you guys, again, one of my favorites. And then tubulin dentata. There is one animal in that whole order, one species. Aardvarks. They're weird and cute. Okay, what else? Oh, okay. So I just ran through all of the placental mammal orders and now I would like you to do that as well. Last week, you guys, um, I posted a Google survey and thank you to the 47 of you who did that survey. Um, 28 of you decided that you wanted to do the assignment where you do all of the orders yourself. So I'm gonna allow you to work in groups. You are going to, if you want, I mean, you guys arrange this however you wanna do it, two, three, four, ten 10 people. That's fine. Um, I want you to build a Google Slides presentation. Each person has to build their own, but you share data, share your research, okay? Um, you can do a Google Slides presentation, or if you wanna make me really happy and, I don't know, maybe get some bonus points on your Prezi, you can put all of these on the Malia section of your Prezi and submit that as your assignment. But I know Prezi's not the easiest to work in always, so I'll accept a Google Slides too, that's fine. You can work in teams, and here I say two to three people, but how am I to know how many people are working on this, right? Uh, please make sure that you list everyone's name with the order that they did, either on the Google Slide or just somewhere in the Prezi section. Okay. So what do I want? For each order of mammals from that list, and the list is also on the assignment on Canvas, I would like you to list the group's distinguishing characteristics. There's just one or two, okay? Simple. For example, for um, order Ar Artiodactyla, these are even-toed ungulates. Ungulates are hoofed mammals, which bear weight on two of their five toes, the third and the fourth. So they run on their middle two toes, I guess. The other toes are either gone or pointed backward, okay? Then tell me, find, identify, and describe an example species for that order, okay? Same as we always do on the Prezi. I want its common name, scientific name, where it lives, its picture, but I also want you to this time throw in its conservation status. Now that means, is it threatened, endangered, extinct in the wild, or of least concern? Are we not worried about it at all? Uh, next week, again, I'm going to hopefully go into having you guys look at some um, extinction issues in the animal kingdom, okay? Uh, that's it. That's it. That's all. That's no big deal. You've got a whole week to do it. Uh, I don't want it until Sunday night, uh, but you know, get it done. And again, work together. I'm fine with that. Uh, reach out if, if if you aren't being approached by anybody, reach out to other people. Hey, I'll do I'll do the par parasodactyla if someone else can do the uh, lagomorphs. Okay, all right, work together, be friends, take care of each other. I still miss you. Uh, come see me in Google Meet, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.